Hi, my name is Malin Krumqvist and today's topic is dyslexia. Today I'm going to tell you about how I got my diagnose of dyslexia and how it works for me to be a student at Lund University. I will also tell you about my challenges and how I handle them. This presentation is based on my own experience, so it's not the same for everyone with dyslexia. I was born in 1997 in Lund in Sweden, and in 2015 I was diagnosed with dyslexia. I was going to turn 18 years old. No one had suspected dyslexia. My grades were good, I was able to read and write well, and I didn't have any extra help in school. But nobody knew how many hours I spended to manage it or how dependent I was on the computer. Not even myself, since my only reference was myself. But after a while, during my second year at the Swedish gymnasium, I realized that I felt that the exams and tests were tricky. I felt that I knew the answers, but I wasn't able to show it. So I got in contact with a teacher who worked with students with special needs. We started an investigation which showed that I had dyslexia. It hit me very hard and I started to feel like that I was tired of fighting and trying my best in school. I felt that I'd fight enough, but I realized that I either start work hard or continue to complain. So I started to work hard. But it is a sensitive subject. I don't have any problems talking about it or people asking questions. I actually tell people very quickly that I have dyslexia. It's one way for me to handle so I don't get into a situation that I feel uncomfortable with. But it is sensitive because I feel that I haven't gotten the help that I actually needed. But in 2016, I started at Lynn University at Faculty of Engineering. I am an engineer student in information and communication engineering technologies. Today, I'm starting my fifth and my last year at the Master of Usability and Design. Lund University. When I started at Lund University, I applied to get support during my studies. It was done through an online form. Since I have a medical certificate of my diagnose, it went easy, and I had a meeting with pedagogical support. We discussed what kind of help the university were able to give and what I needed. Pedagogical support gave me a new certificate where I am, for example, recommended to have oral exams. This certificate is very important for me since I use it every time that I have an exam. I need to write an email to either the course administrative or the teacher and attach the certificate and explain what kind of support that I need to the exam. For example, extended time or a computer. It is up to every teacher to approve my requests, even though I have my certificate from the university. I try to send the email as quick as the course starts, since some of the teachers are slow of answering. Not all teacher approves oral exams, but I've always got an approved extended time. After I contact the teacher, I also need to make a registration for the exam. This is done online by all students with and without disabilities. It would be helpful to add in the registration if you have disabilities and need extra support during the exam. Then I wouldn't need to send emails every time and the process would be more clear. During my years, students are often very kind and no one had said any mean comment. 
But the biggest issue is that I'm not always approved my request, for example, oral exams. Even if I send an email two months before the exam, I do not always get an answer until one or two weeks before the exam. Now I will continue talking about my challenges in my everyday life and in school. Everyday life. I don't like to write when other people are watching. For example, on a whiteboard, in a shared Google Doc, or in text or an email. If I use a shared document, I often write in Word and then paste it in. Then I don't need to focus on that other people can see that I have misspelled the word. I also use Google Translate and sometimes I translate very easy words. If someone is then behind my screen, I feel stupid because I know that I'm supposed to be able to spell the words. Stereotypes. When I tell people that I have dyslexia, they often have a pre-decided picture of what that is. And it's often wrong. The image of dyslexia. I'm surprised that you write that good since you have dyslexia. Even if I have dyslexia, it doesn't mean that I'm not able to write. I have good grades during my school years, but I need extra time and a computer. Challenges in school. I find it hard to take notes during class. I'm not able to write and listen in the same time. The exam time is too short for me to be able to formulate answers. Like I said before, I'm not comfortable with writing on a whiteboard. I also find it hard to write by hand since then I don't have a spell check. My studies are very technical and when I'm writing code, for example, in the terminal, it's difficult for me to discover when I misspell the word since I don't have spell check. I don't like to read text during class since I don't know how fast my classmates are reading. So I try to read as fast as I can to be able to be done in the same time as my classmates. But then I don't remember the content. It is stressful for me to read aloud in the class. And I plan my weeks carefully. So if I get large amount of texts in a short time, I'm not always able to manage to read it. If I listen to a text, I remember more, but it takes longer time. So I'm not able to get an overview of a text. If I get a text as a picture, I'm still able to read and listen to it, but I can't edit. For example, add extra space, listening versus reading. During my investigation, I met a speech therapist and one of my tasks I performed was about three very simple texts. I was supposed to read the first text out loud, the second quiet to myself and I listened to the third. After each text, I was supposed to explain what the text was about. When I read the text out loud, I was able to remember around 30%. When I read quiet to myself, I remember 50%. But when I listen to the text, I almost remember everything. So listen is easier for me than reading. I remember more. This is why I don't read, for example, my course books. It's not efficient for me. Instead, I go to all my classes and listen. And that has turned out very well for me. Talking versus writing. Talking is easier than writing. When I talk, I don't need to focus on the spelling. This is why I find it easier to have an oral exam instead of a written. When I had a written exam when I was going in the Swedish gymnasium, it took around three hours and I scored 75%. But when I had an oral exam, it took one hour and I got the highest grade. I don't get nervous when I have an oral exam, since then I know that I am able to perform. And I only need to focus on the answer and not how to answer.
if I ask someone how a word is spelled and they answer it's spelled like it sounds, it's not helpful for me. I need one letter at a time. I find spelling tricky, but with a computer or a mobile with spell check, it's not that tricky anymore. I would say that I spell with my eyes. I remember a word like a picture, but I find it hard to see the difference between O and U and U and O. And I often miss the end of a word. Here is an example when I'm trying to spell the word journey. I started at the top and changed it until it felt correct. But without a spelling program, I'm not sure. Can you see if I got it right? Now I'm going to tell you about which tools that I'm using. Notability. I use an iPad in school for taking notes and an app called Notability. Notability matches my notes with the sound that I'm recording in that specific moment. In the beginning of all my courses, I need to ask for permission to record my teachers. In this way, I'm minimizing the amount of writing and I'm able to listen to what the teacher said when I was recording it. The picture is an example of my notes. I have highlighted a part of the slide because afterwards I'm able to press on the highlight and listen to what the teacher said when I was drawing it. It works on Apple devices, which is synchronized between them. OneNote. When I'm not taking notes myself, I use OneNote. The university offers to pay one of my classmates if they share their notes with me. OneNote is then a great tool. The notes get shared in real time. It's possible to write by hand or on the computer. Even if they're written by hand, it's possible for, to search for a word in the note. In this way, I don't need to copy every note on a paper. TourTalk. TourTalk is a Swedish company and it's a text to speech tool. I used to listen to my text and listen if I have misspelled a word or missed the end of a word. It has OCR, so it's possible to listen to a text that is saved as an image. At Lund University, it's possible for everyone to use it. This is a good example of a tool which helps not only people with disabilities. And I feel more included when it's available for everyone. Apple. I use Apple products since they have many tools that helps me in my everyday life. Similar functions do also exist in other brands, but I will now tell you some of the tools which are included in Apple products. I think it's nice that it's included because I feel that it helps everyone and not only me who has a disability. Text-to-speech. There's a text-to-speech tool and it works in different languages, but it has no OCR, which for example, TourTalk has. Dictation. I use dictation both when I'm writing a text in school and when I'm sending a text. I often use it when I don't know how to spell the word. Then I just say it and it spells it for me. Read mode in Safari. In the Safari browser, it's possible to remove content like ads, logos, etc. This makes it easier for me to read since I only got the text which is relevant. It is also possible to change the text style and size. The picture to the right shows how the Wikipedia page is presented with the read mode. What can a teacher help me with? A teacher can provide slides ahead. Then I do not need to write extra notes. They can also provide texts ahead. Then I'm able to read or listen to them without feeling stressed. During exams, provide my request of extended time and oral exams. Then I'm able to perform as good as I can. But the most important thing is to show engagement. During one of my courses, I had a teacher 
Did I ask for permission to record? The teacher said yes. But she also contacted me when we were going to have a guest lecture. I didn't need to ask the professor for permission to record since my teacher had already done it. That made me very happy. It is also important to listen to the individual, which is the expert of itself. And remember, not only people with dyslexia get benefits, some of the tools are useful for everyone. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to contact me. Thank you for listening.